Hi, I'm Wally of Dave and Wally. Dave's ate lunch, so he's taking a nap. So today we're going to go over T-joints. Now we're doing 80 mil PVC. As a manufacturer, this is the only place we require T-joints on 80 mil only. There's several areas on the roof that have a T-joint. This right here would be one of them. We have a butt end seam where you'd start another roll. So a lot of guys make the mistake. They think this is the T-joint or this is the T-joint or they'll do the whole thing. In reality, your T-joint is actually right here. So a way to eliminate problems with this is before you weld this, a little trick is wherever these meet, you just come in here and just kind of dog ear this back. So now my T-joint is actually eliminated to one area. Now, there's a right way and wrong way to do T-joints. If you're doing a warranted job and your inspector comes up and sees this done the wrong way, depending how big the job is, you could have one T-joint, you could have a thousand. If you've done a thousand wrong, you're going to have to put a thousand patches and patches you've already done. So again, these are very critical. These are, these are notorious leakers on the roof. Well, let me get this welded down and we'll get right into the T-joint. Now, I'm welding reinforced membrane. I'm going to have my gun, I don't know, eight or nine. When I get down to this, I'm going to turn my gun down a little bit because it's not reinforced. It's not going to take as much heat. And guys ask me all the time, well, what do I weld on? I can't tell you that. This is the gun I use. You may use a totally different gun. Ambient temperature has got a lot to do with it. This is one area you have to find your own rhythm and find your own heat. So again, let me get this welded down. Now it doesn't matter if you're doing PVC or TPO, you're going to do a two-pass weld. Now we're only looking for an inch to inch and a half weld. So you pre-weld your air dam, and you can overheat PVC just like you can TPO. You also see we have our seam attachment in here also. Again, we're looking for bleed out. And you can actually overheat it. As you can see right there, I'm on the verge of overheating. That means I gotta do one or two things. I gotta speed up or I gotta turn my gun down. If you'll notice you need a roller with a nice crisp angle. If your roller's all rounded off, you're doing one or two things. And you're not paying attention and you're starting to braise it up on edge. So remember, there's three things to a good weld, heat, speed, and compression. This is my compression right here. You've got you to gotta concentrate and keep that roller flat. This is a very hard habit to break. And you need this nice crisp angle. Here's one area right here, that little crease. Just kind of pre-crease that. It's going to make that a lot easier when you go do that T-joint. Now you see we got buildup. You've watched our other videos when we talked about the robot welder. We got to clean this off. Same holds true for our our uh, handguns. So I'm going to kind of go around the wrong way how to do a T-joint. Turn my gun down just a little more. Now this re unreinforced material, you're not going to see a lot of bleed out. If it do, it's not going to bleed black line like that. A lot of guys will do, they'll take their probe or those scissors and they'll do one of these numbers. If your inspector sees this, he's probably going to make you patch that. Because basically all you're doing is heating up the top of this membrane. You're going to get a void here and you're going to avoid there. Over time, depending on the area of the country, you get free saw, free saw. This is only going to be this, this big now. Maybe next year it's that big. Pretty soon, eventually, it's going to find its way in that building. So these are very critically done correctly. Now, do it the proper way, however you can do it. Let's show the inspector we want to see a crease in here. How I typically like to do it, I'm going to find that step down with my roller, which is right there. I'm actually going to center it right down my nozzle. I'm going to do the hard part of the weld first. So the hard part's pretty much done. Always pull back, get to your good weld. See, I got a little bit too warm right there. I'm right on the edge overheating that membrane. This is the crease we're looking for right here. Again, improper way, correct way. We have other videos out there, different accessories, robotic welding at GIF.com slash roofing it right.